YouTube, this is Freaza, and today I will be showing you how to make a point slider board with data persistence using Roblox LUA. Um, first, um, open Explorer and Properties in the View tab up here, and then click in Workspace and Insert Object Script. And OK. Once your script's in Workspace, double click to open it. And um, you'll see here I already have the completed script, um, but I'll run through it and explain what everything does. Um, data persistence isn't um, as easy as anything in other tutorials I've done. It's very hard to explain, um, but I will try my best. Um, if after this tutorial you're still stuck in data persistence, I recommend looking at um, uh, the Roblox LU wiki. running through that and um, trying things step by step until you get the hang of it. Okay, um, the function here is um, player added and applies to game.players over here. And um, what this does is when a player is added to the players folder, it connects the function on player added. Once again, the function doesn't need to be called on player added, um, it's just a habit of mine to name the function, um, the connection, but both on before it, um, so that I don't get confused. Um, inside the brackets here, this um, tags um, player as the player that was added. You can tag this, you can name this tag anything, like Nipu joined, and it would still know that it's the player that just added that you're talking about. Um, I'll change that back to player so my script doesn't break. Um, okay, player wait for data ready. This is an inbuilt function. What wait for data ready does is it um, waits until your player has loaded um, uh, so that the game can load the data without any faults. If you don't do this, then um, what it will do is it will load um, all your stats as zero. And if you have an auto save in your game, then all your player stats will instantly be resaved as zero or nil and they'll lose all their data. Um, so it's very important to wait until the player's data is ready. Um, so yeah. Uh, I have the script in workspace, but um, once you get the hang of it, I recommend switching to starter pack and then removing it afterwards. That means that each individual player will have their own script, so that um, if your script does break, then um, it won't um, reset anyone else who joins stats to zero or any anything. Um, of course I'm pretty confident in my data persistence because I've studied it a lot, but I do recommend doing it in starter pack, um, where you can tag the player as script.parent.parent. Um, as once the script in starter pack moves to backpack, um, the um, parent of the script will be backpack and the parent's parent will be your player. Anyway, moving on. Um, here I have X and Y variables. What these do is it's insert, uh, they insert um, int values into the player and name them leader stats and points. Um, leader stats is inside the player and points is inside player.leader stats. <coughs> um, you may already know this, but when you're making leaderboards in Roblox, um, it, to make it show up automatically in the Roblox inbuilt core GUI leaderboard, um, it needs to be well, your um, stats need to be inside something called leader stats. Um, this is just like an empty int value. It doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't matter what value it has because you're just using it as a medium um, to display your stats. So here we insert leader stats and then points inside leader stats. There's normal int values. They don't do anything yet. Here's the real important part. Here. Um, what this does is if your player load number points is not equal to zero, then it loads the player's leader stats points value as player load number points. Um, the main um, data persistence um, features that people use are saved number, load number, save string and load string. Um, but in this tutorial we're just talking about um, save and load number. Um, this doesn't actually save anything called it doesn't save an int value called points or anything, 
um, this is just a name for the number itself. All this is doing is saving a number and putting that number inside an int value. Um, so do remember this, you're just saving a number. You're not saving a model or an int value or anything here. I mean, you know what I mean, or an, um, well yeah, that's very important to remember. So you're, um, when the player enters, you're giving them, um, and well, uh, stats, and then you're loading them here by changing the value to the loaded number if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then the value will already be zero, so um, this doesn't really mean anything. It's just so that you don't try and load a stat that doesn't exist. I could put it's not equal to nil and it would still work. Um, okay. And uh, here's the end to finish off the function, and that pretty much wraps this script up. There's not really any easy way to explain this one, so I recommend just um, copying my script word for word um, and testing it yourself, and then trying editing it, um, maybe changing it to chaos instead, and see how you go from there. Um, okay, now here's the brick in workspace that I added already. Um, which gives the player points and controls saving. Um, to insert your own brick, you click in workspace, insert object part here, and click OK. Um, double click this script. Uh, this is just a basic dot touch script here. Well, up to this point anyway. Now what I do here is I check if, ga if the games players folder um, can get the player from character part up here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's say that um, this particular name part um, touches your left arm. That means that if your left arm's parent, which is your character, left arm parent is Freaza, and it checks if um, the game has anything named Freaza in players. <coughs> Um, but of course it does since I'm already in the game, so yeah. Um, and since I exist, it will um, tag me as player, or whichever player touches the brick. Um, but just hypothetically speaking. And then it will change the player's leader stats points value to player.leaderstats.pointValue plus 1. This just increases the value by 1. Um, really what you should be doing here is writing player, wait for data ready at the start, otherwise the script can break, but I'm just using this to show you, and I doubt any player could get to the brick by the time their stats load, so. Um, but anyway, um, you really should write um, player, wait for data ready. Um, at the start of each script involving data persistence, otherwise it can mess up your stats. Okay, so it's increasing the value by one of player .leader sets points value when you touch the brick, and then this line here, player save number, is the other one I was talking about when it comes to data persistence. Um, save number and load number are um, two peas in a pod, except they do the opposite thing. This um, saves the number and gives it a name and load number um, just takes the name and, uh, well, makes it a number. So yeah, what this does is it saves um, the number from uh, player leader stats dot points dot value and it gives that number the name points so that if you're loading this number you load it as points because that's the name you gave it when you saved it. Um, you can change this name however. Uh, this doesn't need to be points. Um, you can save your number as lay number um, and still refer it to player.leadersets.points.value as long as you load it the same way. Um, but points is a good number to name uh, considering we're saving the points here. Um, but just to avoid confusing, I thought I'd clear that up. Um, so, yeah. It um, loads your number when you join here and uh, gives you leader stats, put points in leader stats. Um, if you have um, your points 
save to you, then it will load the points into player.leadersats.points.value and, and when you touch the brick it will increase your points one by one and repeatedly save the number as points and that's pretty much it. Um, you probably won't get this the first time you do it or the second and maybe not even the third. Um, this isn't easy. Um, so once again I recommend just copying this script, putting it in a brick and testing it yourself and uh, once you get it working just change small things and see if it still works. Um, of course think it through first, I mean if you just change this to this obviously it's not going to work because um, your script here doesn't know what whatever it is. So if you change uh, one thing in save number, remember to look through load number and see if that still works. Well, thanks for watching and um, please comment, rate, subscribe um, and good luck with scripting. Um, please remember that um, usually you have to um, follow through tutorials a few times or experiment a lot to get things working. Um, even for me, I had to follow a series of beginner tutorials um, like 20 times before I even got um, well learned um, low level LU scripting. Um, but once you do learn one programming language, um, others come easier to you because um, they are all very similar. Um, they just use different ways to get around them. So um, please keep at it and don't give up. Um, goodbye.